I'm going to look at uh, the speaker output transformer and just show you um, how uh, it's correctly set. And then I'm going to look at another um, amplifier where there's been a mistake maybe the transformer. And let's see how we can rectify it. So here's the uh, Watkins Dominator. I've um, disconnected the speaker, but um, down here, and I've so this is the wire that goes up to the secondary on the speaker transformer. I've just drawn a little drawing here. This is the input from the valves and the output. You've got uh, two taps. This is the 8 ohm tap, 16 ohm not used. So the speakers are connected there. I've disconnected the speaker so it's open circuit. And I've connected a signal generator up there. And I've also connected an oscilloscope to that point there. Now I, so I can measure the signal going in. So we're feeding the signal in to the pri to the secondary. And I'm going to set the voltage on here of 10 volts. And then we're going to measure the voltage on the other side. And then we're going to work out whether it's the correct transformer for the load. And while we're here, we look at this. We've got the two EL84s working in push pull, and it says here that the anode to anode should be eight kilohms. So we're going to see if that's correct. Now, these two speakers are 16 ohms in parallel, so they're eight ohms. So we've got an eight ohm connected across there when it's actually working. So we've disconnected the speaker at the moment. And uh, I've applied a signal now on the scope, this yellow signal, and uh, down here it's set to 2 volts per, per division, so it's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So we've got 10 volts going in. Now the red one is connected on one of these primaries, comes in on that blue wire to one valve, and the other one comes in on a pink wire down there and the centre tap which is basically the same as an earth is the red one in the middle so we're actually going to be measuring the voltage across where one valve is which would be one half of the primary if we could disconnect that point open circuit that we could measure across the whole thing but I'm not going to unsolder that so now uh, I've set the scope on the red one which is measuring the uh, side with the valve 20 volts per division I set the zero point down here so it's uh, 20, 40, 60, 80, 120, 40, 160 so we've got 10 volts going in, 160 coming out so that's a ratio of 16 to 1 so we've got 10 going in 160 volts coming out, 16 to 1. But that's just one side. So in fact, if you, if it was connected across there, it would actually be 32 volts. So um, we've got two 16s. So it gives us 32 to 1, the ratio. One volt or goes 32, or if you put 32 in here, you get one volt out there. Now to measure the, that's the um, turns ratio, turns ratio, 32 to 1. But to get the actual reflected impedance at the valve C, it's a square. So 32 times 32, if you have a calculator and uh, just measured it, I mean multiply 32 by 32, it's basically 1,000, 1024. Now, to get the reflected resistance, you've got 8 ohms on this side. You multiply the 8 ohms by the impedance ratio. And as you can see, 8 times 1,000, basically 8,000 ohms or 8 kilo ohms, which is exactly 8K. It's exactly the figure you need. So it shows that that transformer and this amp and the speaker load is absolutely the perfect 
setting for these two EL84s. Now, next part of the video, I'm going to show you another amp that's um, had a problem either with the transformer or in manufacture. And then we'll see how we can sort that out. This is uh, another Dominator uh, I'm servicing, getting ready to sell. But um, there's something very strange on the wiring to the output transformer when I had a look at it. Now normally um, on this point here you'd have um, normally on Watkins amps as a capacitor and resistor just for high frequency stability. But, but on this amp um, the transformer you've got the earth on this connection and then 8 ohm and 16 ohm tap. Well the the speaker though I've, I've just taken it off was connected across the 8 and 16 ohm tap positions and not even across the 0 to 16 or 0 to 8. Now the speakers are still wired in parallel so they're 8 ohms. And then on the primary side you've got 1.5k resistors that go from each of the secondary uh, primary winding to one off and these go off to the valves. Uh, EL84s. I just don't know why they've done that. Uh, looks like this couldn't have been done at the factory. It's been done by a mod, but a very long time ago. Um, maybe they were trying to increase the sensitivity because by feeding these signal 8 ohms into here, I've got the scope on again here. Uh, you're feeding in, in the signal, which is set 2 volts per division, that's 10 volts. And on the secondary, I've got it 100 volts per division, so it's 100, 2, 3, 400 volts. Um, so that's 40 to 1 ratio uh, multiplied by 8. I mean, the impedance is going to be astronomic. I just don't know why they've done that. Um, anyway, uh, testing the out for transformer, still the original transformer. If you put the signal where it should be, which is um, between the earth and the 8 ohm tap and uh, let's just move the earth to there now looking back over here you've still got the 10 volt input signal the yellow one but um, the second the uh, the primary one's gone right down now so if we just increase sensitivity a little bit uh, 20 volts per segment, 20, 40, 60, 80, 120, 40, it's about 150. So 15 to 1, as I showed previously, uh, I think we measured uh, previously on the drawing here, 16 to 1, so uh, it's near enough. Um, which gave you, with the 8 ohm speaker, about an 8k load. So um, the transformer's still working, the speakers are 8 ohms, and um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to re reconnect the speakers to the correct points here, take out these two resistors, and um, I might put snubbing resistors in, a lot of manufacturers don't bother, uh, they're kind of a safety thing, uh, and then connect it up and see what it sounds like. Just while we're looking, here's the um, date code on this capacitor here. April 1964. So that's approximately when this old Dominator amp was made. And um, the rest of it's all looking really good. So uh, I'll correct that and uh, see what it sounds like. I've rewired the uh, transformer to the speakers, reconnected the speakers and then run it up on the variac up here. Uh, there you go. It's a 240. Uh, current draw is normal. Check the voltages, that's 309 volts, that's on the B plus. Got 280 on the um, after the on the grid, top grid of the uh, PL84s, and that drops down to 233 for the ECC preamps. 
Now on the, um, I put a matched pair of EL84s, a perfectly matched pair in, but the resistors inside have drifted a little bit, the 270 ohms on the circuit here, 270 ohms, they've drifted slightly, um, so uh, one of them's given 15 volts and the other's just uh, under 13 volts, they should really be the same for perfect balance. Um, I could change the resistor, I haven't changed any components. This is um, completely original, the main filter cap, all the uh, Plessy caps, <laughs> the yellow ones with all the stickers that have shriveled up. Uh, nice, some nice mallard caps in there. Everything is um, original, except for the transformer, which I, someone had messed with in a very long time ago because it was covered in dust. But uh, I've um, connected up speakers correctly on the 8 ohm tap now, and um, it's all working good. Uh, I've got a guitar, but I can't play it and hold the thing at the same time. I'll just turn the volume up for you. That's in the input number tremolo. I'll just turn that down and put it into the microphone input. Turn the volume up. Not up full, but. So I'll put it back together again and then we can play the guitar uh, properly through it, but um, I'll clean the pots a little bit. Uh, the microphone input is a lot louder than the tremolo input, but that happens, um, it's the way the circuit's designed. Um, a little bit of hum probably due to the L84s being slightly out of balance. I might have a look at that. Um, see these uh, little rubber grommets? With these valves, try and stop um, any any vibrations getting through to them. So um, and that e EZ81 is um, original Muller valve is still giving the hundred percent output, which is fantastic. Anyway, I screw it back together again, and then you've got a wonderful V-fronted dominator. Uh, there's the back panel down there. If anyone wants to buy it. And there's the other one that I've done a, a video on, um, which is uh, also works fantastically well. And I uh, did a video on it just showing a small variation in the components inside, otherwise they are pretty much identical, made about 1964, as we've seen by looking at the date code on the big capacitor. Uh, they wouldn't have been in stock for long, they wouldn't keep capacitors around for long they're very expensive so they probably got them in and use them straight away so um, 964 I was pretty much sure that when this amp was built okay th there you go I screw it back together again and um, another successful uh, test and um, hopefully useful information for any technical people out there <laughs>